Hey friends, I'm Riskit. I made this piece in Affinity Designer some time ago, and I thought now would probably be a good time to do a big breakdown sort of time-lapse thing of how I went about making it. Um, it's a really busy design, and it was my first digital busy design. I used to draw pictures like this in my school books all the time as a kid, just trying to cram as much information down onto the page as possible. But I never really attempted to do that digitally until I made this piece. I've got this design up on my Etsy store. Uh, you can get it on like t-shirts and hoodies and whatnot. Um, but yeah, I really just wanted to sort of show you how I went about making this. Fair warning. Uh, this is probably going to be a pretty long video. Um, it took me a couple of weeks to actually finish this um, on and off. I've broken this whole video up into different chapters. So if you want to skip through, feel free. I'll pop up from time to time um, and talk about each one. Now I do start off drawing this in the desktop version of Affinity Designer, uh, but I got sick and tired of sitting at a computer for so long. So uh, towards the middle of the video, I wound up getting a iPad Pro. So um, during the midpoint of this video, you'll probably see the screen resolution switch a little bit as I switch over to the iPad version, um, but it's still the same project through and through. So without any further ado, let's get started. All right, so this is the rough phase. I was really just messing around with like trying to sketch a girl and I wanted to have all of these busy creatures hanging around her. Um, at the time, I was not actually very good at drawing people. I've gotten a lot better since then. Um, and I really couldn't draw faces to save my life either, um, which I've also improved on now. So in hindsight, she's not exactly the way I wanted her to turn out, um, but I think it sort of worked out all right in the end. Cool, and now I'm just basically like drawing dots and lines and seeing if I can turn them into little creatures and trying to get like a nice flow going. A lot of these like initial sketches here don't even wind up getting used in the final thing because um, this is really just like the idea phase. I'm just putting down a bunch of shit on paper and seeing what'll work. I think I only wound up keeping like two or three things in this whole section um, before I actually get into the, the rough sketch phase. So around this point, I had like a bunch of things on the screen. I didn't mind the fish, the guy on the right and the big creature biting her in the back, um, but I wasn't really sold on everything else. So I pretty much just erased it and started again. Cool, so now I'm entering like the rough sketch phase. Um, this is like a really useful step because I've, I do have like a very rough sketch underneath it, but that's just for mainly getting down ideas. Now that I've got those, I go over it with a different, um, different color on a different layer. And this way I can really start sort of refining some of the shapes and adding in some of the detail that I want to see there later on. Really, it's just a bunch of dots and lines. I've drawn like this for a long time. I just really like drawing like big puffy eyes and gnashing teeth, um, sort of just cramming on a lot of detail. But if you break down a lot of my drawings, there's really just like the shape of an arm and then a bunch of hashes and lines and circles and squares and 
little shapes strewn all over it in like a, a sort of textured way. So um, it might look really complex, but if you break each piece down, it's actually not really that complex at all. Also, if you're interested, um, I do have like a few more of these time lapses for previous projects that I plan on uploading. But once they're all out of the way, I'm really excited to be um, jumping into starting like an online drawing uh, tutorial series. I really want to make several videos sort of showing a lot of the turning points that helped define me as an artist. Um, I've got a pretty good memory from like uh, little key moments that changed my drawing life forever from like the time I watched uh, the guy from Art Attack draw a carrot to my dad showing me how to draw a train, uh, little shading techniques and tips that I picked up over the years from doing other things. Um, so I'm really excited to sort of put them in a clear and concise way because I really do believe that everybody has the ability to draw. Um, I don't think that talent is something that you're born with. I really, really think that it's something that is earned through a lot of practice and perseverance. Um, and uh, yeah, I kind of want to just give people like a big index of shortcuts and little things that they can try out to start drawing whatever they come up with in their head. So now I'm just sketching in some of these plants on a different layer. Um, I had a pretty good idea of how I wanted them to sort of be laid out. This is just a very time consuming process though. I think I didn't wind up liking the way that fish's tail looked at the top of this image. So later on, I just wound up erasing it and then drawing a new one that sort of flowed better with the rest of everything else. There might be a couple of missing sections um, where it sort of jumps to something like more complete. Uh, that'd probably just be because I forgot to enable screen recording after I'd taken a break. Um, so yeah, I figured I couldn't really think of much else to put along the top that would sort of flow nicely and round off the top of the image. So I just wound up drawing a bunch of these stretched out screaming faces. It was really time consuming and as I was working through this uh, rough draft layer, the whole time in the back of my head I'm thinking, man, I'm going to have to fine line these and colour them and yeah, I don't know. I realized like when I finished all of the sketch that I really had my work cut out for me, but I'm glad that I pushed through in the end. There's something really therapeutic about just sitting down and drawing for hours on end. Um, sometimes it can get a little boring even, but most of the time I just sort of zone out and it's a really nice um, experience.
Well, so now that the top of that image is pretty much sketched out, I'm just throwing in a few extra plants for a little bit more detail. A lot of people don't really like very busy images, but I really love staring at a picture that demands you to look at it for longer than 10 seconds just to take everything in. There's something really cool about that, and I don't know, it's just something I've always liked doing. Um, now I'm just like sort of putting in some better line work for the girl, um, just to make sure that everything is gonna work. Um, fixing up a few edges, and now I start the coloring. So I'm just using the pencil tool, uh, and just on a separate layer underneath, I'm tracing out the, the basic shape and just blocking it in. Um, and then I go about pretty much making it for her clothes and her hair and lips and whatnot. So uh, as I said in my previous video, I use this method pretty much with everything. Um, it's just a way to set up some really quick base colors, but um, later on they also act as clipping masks. So when I start texturing and shading, um, I can basically just start smashing down some different colors and whatnot and never have to worry about going outside of the lines or outside of those shapes. It really makes the process a lot faster and if I did want to go out of the shape then I'll just paint on top of it on a different layer anyway. Sweet, so now onto these corporate looking plants. Um, it's uh, pretty basic, they're just very basic shapes with other basic shapes on top of them. Um, splitting them in half and just putting down some very rough like spray paint style texture. Then just to make it stand out a little more I get a vector brush and just paint some small highlights on it. I only made five of these um, and then I just wind up duplicating them all over the image into different shapes and just sort of lightly making them fit over my original sketch. Uh, I didn't want to paint in any shadows on the original shape, so you'll see later on I start actually painting in the shadows for each individual cluster of leaves and that way it just makes them look a little bit more different and unique from one another. So what you can see me doing here is just using some masks to sort of uh, delete sort of sections that I know are gonna be hidden behind other objects later on. And now I'm painting in those shadows. Sweet, now we're on to the fine line stage. Um, I'm really just blocking in like the big basic shapes of this first. Um, I'm using vector brushes to do this. I know that the image is basically going to be a pixel image at the end of it. Um, so not everybody can see the point in me doing this, but I have a couple of reasons. Um, one of them being that I'd really like to get all of the vector line work from all of my artworks over the years one day and make a coloring book out of it. Um, but the other reason too is um, I'm trying to get some really nice clean line work going on and using a vector brush, if I make a mistake, instead of just having to redraw everything, I can just grab the selection tool and start dragging the points around until I'm happy with them. I usually put a really thick outline around main shapes and then use smaller and smaller brushes as I get into the details. Um, if you sort of make your line work all the same, uh, regardless of your colors, sometimes things can look a little bit mushed together and it's really hard for the eye to quickly tell what's what. So using some thick line work is a really good way to break each element up. You might notice too that I'm not using true black. I never really use true black in my images. It's just like a very 
old graphic design technique. Um, I use a really, really dark shade of purple. Um, that way when I'm slamming in some other colors later on, it doesn't look too jarring to have like this ultimate pitch black color or, you know, black's not a color, but this ultimate pitch black um, and then some colors sort of like wrapped around it. Cool, so now I'm just coming in and adding in a ton of really small details. Um, when I'm doing this stuff too, I don't really put too much thought into it. I like putting little folds and bends and creases, scars, sores, um, little hairs, uh, just like anything that I can fit in. I don't like leaving a lot of empty space because that can make an image look really flat. So anything to sort of give it some texture or some depth or, or something. Um, a lot of the time when I'm drawing this too, um, I kind of just go off feeling. Um, it's, I don't know, to me, it's not always about what looks right, but it has to feel right. So I, I guess what I'm trying to say is as I'm drawing this stuff, I'm sort of wondering what that surface would feel like and um, putting little bumps and creases and folds and stuff there. Um, it's, it's hard for me to explain, but it's, it's just the way my brain works when I'm drawing.
Now I'm just coming in and blocking in some different clipping masks and basic colours for a lot of these creatures. I wasn't really too concerned about what colours I was going to finally choose, just like a rough thing because I'm going to be painting over them anyway. But I wanted to make the colours different enough so that I could ensure that each, each creature was going to stand out from the other. When I'm blocking in these shapes, I usually use the pencil tool to just fill in as much as I can, um, stop drawing, and then draw in a couple more shapes until this, the area I'm trying to fill has been fully filmed. Um, once I've done that, I'll select all of those shapes that I've just drawn and then um, combine them into one layer so that they wind up all being one shape. That way, when I come in and use that as a clipping mask earlier, um, I'm only painting in that one arm or that one tentacle. Now I'm just assigning a few more plants. Um, I really like those mother-in-law's tongues sort of plants. I don't know what they're really called. This is what we call them here. Um, they're a little bit tricky to get right too. Like I wound up looking up a few other references on how other people do them and then looking at one that we had outside. Um, but yeah, I think they turned out all right in the end. I wasn't too concerned either about these exactly matching um, my like reference drawings. One thing Affinity Designer lacks that Affinity Photo has is the liquefy and warping tool. I really wish that that was included in here because I would have loved to have lined them up with my original sketch and it would make it so much easier to create variations. Um, but as it stands right now, they just don't have that function in there. So I was really happy with what I had so far. Um, and this whole time I'd been using an Intuos Pro on a Windows PC to do all of this. I was spending a lot of time in front of the computer and I was kind of getting over it. So I decided to lash out and buy an iPad Pro and an Apple Pencil because I really wanted to be able to do this sort of artwork on the go. And I'd heard that Affinity Designer had a pretty good iPad app version. 
um, I was a bit skeptical about how everything would go transferring it from the desktop application to the iPad version, but it wound up working perfectly. Um, there was nothing wrong with it and the iPad held up all the way to to the end. Um, so really impressed with that version of the app and it was, uh, it's been really useful now because I can just sort of make this artwork whenever I'm on the go. If I'm on holiday, I can just bring it with me and keep working on stuff. Um, so yeah, you know, if you got access to one and you're not sure about getting the iPad app, um, go for gold, man. It's awesome. So now I'm starting the proper shading process for each one of these creatures and little characters. Um, so I always just smash down like a very dark color for the texture. And then I slowly start building it up with like mid-tones and then soft highlights. Later on, I come in with the pencil tool again and I actually sketch in some highlights like you can see me doing on the bird here. Um, and then I also do the same process, but with hard shadows. Um, and that can really just make each image pop up. So here's the hard shadows here. Um, it's just a little technique I use. I'm not really concerned about where a light source is or isn't either. I'm just outlining and like picking different parts of my detail and just trying to make each one stand out more. And I think it works really well. It gives everything a little bit more depth. So I'm just gonna repeat that exact same process, but on everything. I did hear when using the iPad version that Affinity Designer has a layer limit. Um, I can't remember what it is, it's pretty high, but just so that I would never hit it, um, every time I draw these highlights or um, these hard shadows, I'd pretty much group them into one object and then um, merge them so that they would all appear on one layer. A little bit harder to edit later on, but I couldn't really see myself coming back and editing these because I was already pretty over <laughs> the amount of time that I'd spent working on this thing.
Cool, so we're getting pretty close towards the end now. I just had to do that same thing for all of the heads. I pretty much decided to leave them for last because I knew I could just sort of do them all in one big go. Uh, it took forever, but yeah, I think it looked pretty cool in the end. So I realized to some people that this whole project might look really complicated. Um, and I guess to just take it at face value, it kind of is. But really, when you break down this whole process, it's actually very simple. I'm sketching out a rough design. I'm going over it with a vector line tool to give it some nice clean line work. I'm filling in the color with flat shapes that I'm going to use as clipping masks. And then I shade it. Add hard highlights and then hard shadows and call it a day that's it aside for some like final um, color correction stuff that i always save to the very end and then just throwing a nice warm lens filter over the top to bring all the colors together um, that's pretty much the whole process i do plan on like outlining this a lot clearer in a later video uh, with something that people can actually follow along to um, but for now, if you can't wait that long and you're just keen to get started, um, just try it out and see what you can come up with. So I totally forgot to record like the last day of work that I spent on this. Um, I really wasn't happy with the colouring and shading that I'd done on the girl in the centre. And I really wasn't happy with the uh, heads at the top all being one uniform color. So I came in and basically gave the girl like a complete makeover. <laughs> um, and then I kind of just used an adjustment layer and changed up some of the coloring of the heads until I was happy with them. That's pretty much my entire process. And I hope that it's useful for some people to sit back and watch and maybe try out on their own. In case you just skipped through the video and gotten to the end, uh, as I was saying earlier, I do plan on making a beginner's drawing course, um, sort of going from start to finish uh, for if, if you've never drawn before or you don't know how to draw, to eventually being able to draw stuff like this. Um, I do a lot of different artwork and I've had a lot of years of experience and I think it's time that I just made like a good little library that people can refer back to and gain some extra knowledge from. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below. As I'm making this video, I think I've got roughly 20 subscribers. This is really um, my second ever YouTube video. Everything else on my channel is just stuff that I'd uploaded to Instagram over the past few years. And I'm kind of sort of trying to navigate how to do these things properly. I feel like I've already got a pretty monotone voice um, and maybe I need to work on my pizzazz a little bit more. Um, but for now, this is what you get. So if you ask me a question, chances are I'm probably going to respond. Um, thanks for watching and uh, look forward to seeing you in the next one. Um, I guess hit the like button and subscribe. Uh, everybody else seems to tell everyone to do that. So I'll just save it for the end now. Thanks. Bye.